Hello, my name is David Watson. I'm a river engineer with the government of Alberta. Albertans use water in a variety of different ways and rivers.alberta.ca is a great place to go to get information related to stream flow, snowpack data, precipitation data, any flooding advisories. So whether you're a license holder, an angler, a canoeist, or you're tracking flooding in your area, rivers.alberta.ca is a great source for that information. Today we'll be going through the common features of rivers.alberta.ca, and this video will be broken up into five different chapters as we learn about the features. So without any further ado, let's get started. So when we first navigate to rivers.alberta.ca, this will be your default screen. Um, you can see up in the top right hand corner, we'll have a set of layers and corresponding data sets. The default layer that we'll navigate to is this near real time data and flood advisories. And we'll also be talking about the water management data and water shortage advisories today. The circles that you can see on the screen with the numbers in them indicate the data sets that you have selected here on the side. I'm going to turn off everything but the rivers and lake stations and we'll navigate to them and see what kind of information we can see. In the clusters, it shows you the numbers of stations that are available in that area. So by either zooming in or by clicking on a station, we'll zoom in, the stations will expand, and then we can hover over the stations and see their names and their Water Survey of Canada ID. In the bottom right hand of each of these stations, there will be this little circle that we call a data currency indicator. It will turn green if there's data available in the last 24 hours and gray if data isn't available during that time period. When we click on the station, we'll open the quick view bubble. We'll get the most recent water level and flow information here, as well as a timestamp of when that information was recorded. And if we want to view the data in more detail, we can use these blue icons here on the side. The top icon here is table data. And when we click on it, we can get a more detailed look at the data recorded at that station. The data table will go back five days. And in this case, data is being recorded every five minutes. There's also an option to download data at the bottom of the table, uh, should you choose to do that. The second icon is the weekly graph, and clicking on it will pull up a graph of the last seven days of data. On the bottom will be the water level data, and the top will show you the flow data. Also, in the flow graph, there will be this highlighted area, the shaded region, which is comprised of the upper quartile and the lower quartile of data recorded at that station. So if we're within that range, we call it the normal range. And if we're above that, we say that we're above normal for this time of year. The third icon is the yearly graph. And it is, again, a longer time period showing the same period of data. And here we can see this normal period going out a little bit longer. So we can see that the normal range for the flow in this river changes depending on the time of the year that you're in. For this particular station, the highest flows are in May and June as we get the mountain snowmelt coming off. And then we'll get a fall recession back down to fall and winter levels. So the normal range tells us a lot about what that river naturally does at that uh, location. This bottom icon is how you can favorite a station. So favoriting a station allows you to favorite a few stations. If you're habitually looking at the same stations, these favorited stations will persist when all other layers are turned off. So if you're navigating province-wide, you can quickly go to your stations and click on the data that you like to see. You can also go to the favorite stations by using the main menu in the top left-hand corner, navigating down to My Stations, and these stations will also appear on your list. And clicking on them will navigate to the station and open up the quick view data for you to see your data. The second layer type that we have in the menu is precipitation data. The station clusters behave exactly the same, and so do the data currency indicators. Green if we have data in the past 24 hours, gray if we don't. There is one additional type of indicator, and that's this blue indicator. And that means that we have precip that was recorded in the last six hours. If 
we open a, um, a station with data, we see the quick view bubble gives us a little bit different information. Instead of giving us the most recent data recorded at that station, it'll give us a six hour, a 12 hour, 24 or 48 hour rainfall accumulation. So you can quickly and easily see um, how precip has affected that station. You can also go into the table data just like we saw in the stream flow data, see your data that way, or use the weekly or yearly graphs and get your precip information that way. Similarly, you can also save it to your MyStations for quick viewing later. We have our snow pillow information. These are typically located in the eastern slopes and same behavior, we have the data currency indicator, green and gray. Clicking it will give us our most uh, recent snow water equivalent reading. Snow water equivalent means that's the amount of water that would be available in that column should it all melt and turn to water. So it's not a true snow depth, it's the amount of water contained in the snow at that location. And again, you can view it by the table, download the data if you so choose, you can see it in your weekly graph, as well as you can see it in your yearly graph. One difference that we have over the snow pillow data that we do with the river data is that we're showing you this year's data in blue, but we're also showing you last year's data in red. So you can compare it to the most recent snow year that we've had. And then again, the normalized period is shown shaded here in gray. Now we're going to show how advisories, high flow advisories and water shortage advisories work on uh, rivers.alberta.ca. Now we can see a couple things are happening. I have this banner up at the top that's cycling through some information. I also have some highlighted regions down in southern Alberta here. These highlighted areas show the area of the province that are under various advisory levels. Clicking on them will give me my different definitions of advisory. So this yellow is a high stream flow advisory. The orange is a flood watch. And the red is our most severe advisory, a flood warning. We can also have links to different products in these um, pop-up views as well. Clicking on the advisory, so it'll open up the advisory table and it will summarize the different rivers that are under advisories, as well as the various advisory levels. And then further clicking on the items in the table will open up an advisory overview. We can also get to the advisory table and the advisory overview by going under the main menu here. We also have these polylines um, that delineate more major rivers. So if we're downstream of a few tributaries where it's raining and the flood advisories is limited to a single river reach, um, we can use these polylines to delineate them. But the behavior is exactly the same as the polygons that we had shown previously. We'll now show the water sh management advisories and the water shortage layer. So our second layer here is our water management data and water shortage advisories. And this is where we'll publish various water shortage advisories and um, have water management data sets available. So you can see in our data layers here, we have many of the same data sets available to us. The only one is different here is that we have a water management layer as opposed to our rivers and lakes layers. The difference here is that the water management stations don't have as discrete data in them. Rather than having um, five minute data or hourly data, um, we have daily averages here. And these daily averages uh, seen here by this recorded flow are compared to various water management thresholds which are station dependent. For this station, we have an in-stream objective and a water conservation objective. And we can learn more about what these mean by clicking on the legend, which will give us our definitions of any particular water threshold that may be present at a certain station. If the recorded flow is above the in-stream objective or water conservation objective or whatever threshold happens to be active for that station, the station pin will be colored blue. If we are getting close to any of those thresholds, the station pin will turn yellow. 
So here our recorded flow is above our in-stream objective, but it is getting relatively close. So it's highlighted yellow, so people are aware. And if in-stream, if the recorded flows happen to go below the in-stream objectives or water conservation objectives or what have you for that station, it's highlighted red. These water thresholds allow water license holders to quickly see if their flow is above or below these thresholds, and then they can modify their water usage accordingly and in terms of the licenses. If there is a water shortage advisory published, they will be published using these purple water management areas. When we click on a water shortage advisory, we can see why that advisory was issued. In this case, it's a low flow condition. There will be a short description and also some icons showing us what has been affected. In this case, we have a temporary diversion license and license holders are affected. And clicking on these icons will pull up our definition and information sheets. And at the bottom here, our water shortage advisory management actions are also defined. If you're a licensee and your basin is shaded purple, then you are responsible for following the management actions listed in this water shortage advisory. So this was a quick overview of how both high flow advisories and water shortage advisories are displayed and what information is associated with them on the website. But we also have a lot more information in terms of data and reports available on the website. And that's what we'll learn about in the next chapter. For those of us that are interested in more information regarding forecasting and what other data is available, um, we can find it in the main menu. The main menu is represented by the three horizontal bars in the top left hand corner and clicking on that will open the menu. We've already talked about the advisory overview and the advisory table in the advisory section, but now we have much more information available to us. Forecasters comments are updated usually bi-weekly or when there's a high flow advisory uh, published, they'll be updated daily. And here we can get information on what kind of weather has impacted or is expected to impact the province. And then what effects we think that that's going to have on the rivers as a result of that weather. We also have links to our flood hazard identification program and our flood awareness map application which won't be a part of this presentation. Also on the main menu, we can find precipitation maps. These are updated daily, Monday through Friday. We can see our daily precip map here, which is a 24 hour period of the last 24 hours. We can get our weekly precipitation map, see the accumulated precip over the past week. And on Mondays, our monthly precip map is updated and we can see the accumulation over the province over the past month. Under the main menu, we can also find the water supply outlook. The water supply outlook is published January through to August of each year. And the water supply outlooks contain natural flow volumes from March to September for various river basins in the province. Clicking on these will give us an idea of the volume of water from March 1st to September 30th that we're predicting. And it's useful for license holders or irrigation districts for some long-term planning. Also in the water supply outlook is contextual data that we use to come up with the flow volumes. So the mountain snowpack measurements can be found here. Past month and seasonal precip um, accumulations can be found soil moisture, long lead precipitations, reservoir storage summaries, all of that can be found summarized in the water supply outlook. Also under the main menu is this maps and data summaries. It contains much of the same information that we saw in the water supply outlook, except it's linking straight to the data sets rather than giving any contextual information about it. In the top right hand corner of the website, there's this help button. This help button will give you a very high level overview of how to use the website, which hopefully um, became more clear as you watch this video. And if you have any questions or comments or feedback, you can send them to this aep.webws.gov.ab.ca email address. Another way we can get this information is by downloading our Alberta Rivers mobile application. 
Just search Alberta Rivers on Google Play or the Apple Store to get the latest version of the app. We can get all the same station data and all the same river-related advisories that we previously saw, as well as you can sign up for push notifications as well. Thank you for watching this video, and please feel free to give us some feedback or leave a comment below.